In V-Ray Next, we've introduced a new hair shader, the V-Ray Hair Next material, which has controls based on the real-world physiological properties of hair. By mimicking physiological characteristics with simple controls, V-Ray Next makes it incredibly easy to get realistic-looking results with little effort. To start, let's open the Hypershade Editor, and from the V-Ray list on the left, let's choose the V-Ray Hair Next material. Now I'll select the hair in my scene here, and assign the material to it. Alright, let's go ahead and start the IPR, just to see how the hair material looks with the default values. As you can see, right out of the box, we have a realistic looking result. Now let's explore some different ways we can customize the hair to our liking. I'm going to draw a render region here, and let's start by increasing the melanin parameter, which adjusts the pigmentation of the hair. Higher values will darken the hair, whereas lower values will lighten it. Let's draw another render region, and this time create a ginger hair color. To achieve this, let's lower the melanin a bit, and then increase the pheomelanin parameter, which adds redness to the hair. If I keep trying different values, you'll see that simply adjusting these two parameters alone, we can achieve a variety of different looks that feel incredibly realistic. And, if we want to create dark hair, we can just remove the pheomelanin and increase the melanin amount to very high. Okay, I'll turn off the render region now, and let's explore how to use the dye hair color. Just like in real life, we'll need to bleach the hair first to create a bright color dye, so let's bring the melanin value down to zero. Now, from the color picker, we can choose any color that suits our taste. In this case, let's try a bluish color. As you can see, the hair now appears blue, while emulating the artificial character of real-world dyes. Okay, next let's remove the dye color, and set the melanin value to something in the middle like 0.6, and then take a look at the glint control parameters. Here you can adjust the strength of the focused highlights, or the glint, and randomly scattered colorless highlights, or glitter, on the hair strands. Let's draw a render region, and start increasing the glint strength value. This value controls the highlight's strength along and across the hair strands. As the render clears up, you'll see the highlights popping out a bit more. Let's drag the value all the way to 1. While the effect is somewhat subtle, it helps to add more vitality to the hair. Next, I'll set the glint strength back to the default, and let's increase the glitter strength to 1. This value controls the strength of the glitter highlights randomly scattered along the strands. Okay, let's set it to 0.2 and turn off the render region. Finally, let's drop down the randomization section and then change the random melanin parameter. This setting will add some variation to the amount of melanin in the hair strands. Let's turn on the render region again so we can compare any changes we make and I'll increase the random melanin a bit so you can see the effect it has on the hair. Okay. Lastly, let's increase the random gray hair density here, which you'll see adds white hairs randomly to emulate aging. Even at 0.26, the effect is already quite visible. Alright, now you've seen how with just a few tweaks to a handful of parameters, using the V-Ray Hair Next material, you can create an enormous variety of incredibly realistic and customized hairstyles right out of the box.